Do you know that Edward II, there's a lot of things about Edward II, he p- tried to pass a lot of laws. Anyway, they say they shoved a poker up his ass. He tried to jump off to the, you know when you get hanged, what's it called? <laughs> I wake up every morning <laughs> and then imagine you're dead. Today we're going to ride out to a medieval abbey for our wedding anniversary and my birthday and Brian's booked us in for a medieval banquet which I am so excited about. So tonight we are going to be dressing up as well. Oh it's all very exciting. I can't wait. History and food. I mean and bikes. History, food and bikes. That's the best way to spend an anniversary isn't it? Oh yeah and the husband. But isn't it the best way to spend an anniversary? I wonder what food we'll get. Anyway, we've got to get there first. It should take us about three hours. I've got Brian an outfit for today. Not now, obviously, he wouldn't be wearing it now. Let's just say we both wearing maxi, maxi dresses. That's a hint. Although I don't think it's technically called a dress. I, well, I know his is not called a dress. I've got some new trousers from Road Skin which I'm very excited about because I've been a bit of a chunky monkey recently because of hibernating over the winter, which seemed really long this year. I need to get fitter, which I have plans for, which is bike related actually. Anyway, so I'm loving these trousers because these ones are super tight and they just like snatch you in in your stomach, which I love. Hang on, see if I can go down. Look at that, bit of overhang, but look. Oh, I'm really happy with that. Although walking's a bit crazy because I'm not used to wearing anything so tight. So I'm not sure how elegant I am. Oh, exciting times. And uh, off we go. Oh yeah, I haven't said happy anniversary to Brian. Oh shit, I'm such a bad wife. Fuck. Okay, let me go sort that. Right, hang on, let me go sort that. Okay, here we go. Are you excited? I am, yeah. I'm looking forward to the food. <laughs> 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 what's, you know I mean? what's not to like, darling? Bikes, food, Bikes. Yeah. history, yeah. and boobs. That should be good. I'm, I'm, I've been wanting to do something like this for some time. Are you excited about uh, about your surprise outfit that you're going to have to wear tonight? I hope it fits. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently on the website, you don't have to go dressed up, but I figured Embrace the experience and just go for it. Hey. Well, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Let's just say we shall both be wearing maxi dresses. And you have to wear whatever I give you, okay? Deal? And this is punishment for 23 years of marriage, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Do I have to bribe you in some way? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I shall think of something that you might want. Yeah, I wonder what <laughs> in that payment. could be. <laughs> Let me hear your suggestions. <laughs> I like your new bunnies. Thanks. I like it too. Although I don't have any tattoos. Well, I do now, I guess, with this bunnies. Am I allowed to swear? You are, why? No, I mean swearing as in a bad swear. Is swearing really bad though? I mean, it's bad because we've made it bad. Are you asking for the channel purpose? Are you allowed to swear? Or yeah. are you asking me for permission? <laughs> I don't need permission for me for anything, dude. <laughs> it's, we're going back to medieval time. Do you know what? Actually, actually, yeah. it was more equal. You had to both consent to be married in medieval times. Did you? Yes. And both of you had rights to have sex sexual relationship in your marriage and oh. women were allowed to take their husbands to court because of imp- impotency but oh, that really? mainly yeah but that mainly happened in the upper classes oh, apparently okay. like one in five that, that seems awful high one in five of the nobles would would make a case for impotency in germany they made marriage arguments more fair so that if you were fighting then a married couple could only fight if the man was in a hole in the ground with his hand behind his back and then the woman could hit him with a, like a bag of rocks or something. Are you serious? Yeah. 
so then he could fight back but with, only with one hand and then she could just hit him with whatever including rocks do you know talking of hands right i don't know if this is true do you know what i'm going to spout them and then you can research you I'll can fact check, check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can be my fact checker so apparently handbags are called handbags because the women had to go out you know after a battle and count the dead or, or bring and they couldn't carry the bodies so they would just chop off a hand and then put the hands in a bag but they're ready that's what i read why take the hand and not the finger stop it well then why take the <laughs> finger why not take a fingernail you know but, yeah but uh, yeah so where are we going we are going to Coombe abbey yeah which is an abbey built after the norman invasion so the Normans invaded in 1066. And so the Normans they were, came from France. Normans came from France. So there was, at the time, old Harold. Harold was on the throne, but when? he was only on the throne for six, so in 1066. Um, so he was related to, I always remember him as Cunt the Great, but it's Cunt only been, the great. yeah, Cunt the Great. So <laughs> Cunt the Great is not Cunt, it's C-N-U-T, so Knut. The great C N U T, okay. yes. Right. Yeah. So that's the word I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say. So he was related to him, so he became king. Okay. Can I just talk about cunt for a minute? Yes, go on then. Right. right. Can I? May are I? You, are you talking about C U N T or the actual word cunt? Isn't that the same thing? C N U T. Oh, C N U T. I thought you said C U N T. I, I probably or... don't, to be okay. fair. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. It's been a while. Okay. What has cunts? In the, yeah. <laughs> wow, nice. <laughs> okay, go. Sorry. Fucking hell. <laughs> we digress. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, this is all digressing because that's where my mind is today because you decided to give me um, chocolate eclairs before we left, so I'm a bit sugary. Oh, well, that's good. That's the whole point, isn't it? Fill me up with sugar, put a camera on me and let me go. Right, exactly. okay. <laughs> See, we'll see Happy what happens. Days. So, uh, where were we? Cunts. You're talking yes. about cunts. Right, so, I was having a look at the etymology of cunt, right? There is the, the Latin word, you know, for, for, for vagina. There. It is. Is it cun, cunus? Cunus? something like that anyway but we're not going there we're going to go for the kind of German Germanic because the, the early English as they say were Anglo-Saxons who came from Germany so it was German okay right and they had the word for cunt that was the well the word for vagina which was cunt so cunt's not actually a bad word uh, so what in Germany it's cunt is actually a vagina well, I don't know in Germany then, but Germany, uh, Germany now, but Germany then, okay. it came from the old Germanic word. So I don't know, is cunt vagina? Not sure. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> right? So the first kind of appearance of the, of the word cunt is there was le uh, a road in London called Grope Cunt Lane. Okay. Right? Because it was kind of normal for for street names to be named after something that happened there. And that was the road for prostitutes. Okay. Right? Yeah? Yeah. So it was called Grope Hunt. Yeah. And then, you know, by the time Shakespeare's time it was it was a bad word. Right. Is it a bad word or just a rude word? I don't know. But now it's a really bad word. Yeah, Although, but it's like, why is it more taboo than saying normal swear word? Uh, There's the connotations because of, you know... Connotations? Well, the thing is, you don't know, because in Australia, you can have, ah, oh, he's a good cunt. Okay. He's a bad cunt. He's just a, a person. So I think it depends on your culture. A cunt can also be an arsehole, but it's also referred to as a man. <laughs> No, not as in an arsehole, as in an actual, um, an actual buttock. Right. Buttock hole. Oh, God's sake, can I shut up? A bum hole. Yes. <laughs> what? A what is wrong with me? A buttock hole. So when you cut, if you go, ah, oh, he's such a cunt, it's normally against a man, not a woman, yet a cunt's meant to be a woman's bits. So if a woman's bits are so, why is cunt so offensive if it's a vagina? So cunt shouldn't really be a bad word, 
should it? I get your reasoning, yes. Because why is a vagina a bad word? The same thing, he's a prick. He's a prick? Yeah. He's a penis. Yeah, but I get that, because penis well, is a, a pokey, aren't they? <laughs> no? No? Is that not right? Okay. <laughs> no. You can call a lot of people dickheads, penis. Yeah, dick. Wanker. Knob. You're a knobhead. Shit face. <laughs> <laughs> I actually oh wonder God. if we're going to be able to monetize this vlog. I love, do you know what I love? I love that because I was so strict with swear words growing up. Yeah. That they're still so funny to me, like I'm still a child. So I never really said all that stuff. And so now I, I am saying it. I'm like, I I, it, well, no, it just makes me laugh so much. And I don't know why. I mean, why is shit face? Why is that even funny? <laughs> <laughs> And why is being drunk shit face? What does that mean? Well, because maybe when you wake up, you often... You don't put poo on your face, though, do you? Well, maybe you crap your pants and end up lying in it. I don't know. Oh, my God. What kind of drugs do you think there are? Uh, anyway, I, you... <laughs> I, I, I've worked in my clubs, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> trust, trust me, I've seen and it all. And so they go in clean and they all come they out come with out, poo yeah. on their face. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your shit face, your shit face. It's weird how it has those meanings to it. Yeah. But I do get what you're saying. Like, the reality is guys worship ladies' vaginas. Yeah. And yet we're quite happy to insult people by calling them one. Yeah, but normally we insult a man by calling him a cunt. We don't tend to call a woman a cunt. I mean, nowadays we can be because... You know, but it tends to be the worst. Like, you call a woman a cunt, she's a real... You hate her, don't you? I don't yeah. know, I don't think I've ever called anyone a cunt. Have I? I probably called you a cunt. Have I? Probably. Would I call you a cunt? It would be joking, though. Mm, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember. I don't think I would call someone a cunt. But not because I don't like the word. Well, I just find language fascinating. And there's a lot worse words like than the word cunt for vagina that we could use to insult someone yet it is the most insulting word yeah it just it doesn't really make any sense oh, right i want to get past this person yes, it's so well, annoying me they're going five miles an hour i know they really are hang on after Harold was killed in the Battle of Hastings. Okay, so how we got back to Harold now after talking about cunts? Well, remember, he was related to the, the great cunt. <laughs> to, <laughs> to the, the great, great cunt. cunt. Okay, so then he was killed in the Battle of Hastings, which wasn't actually in the Hastings. Uh, it was like seven miles outside of Hastings, but near enough. And William the bastard, and he really was a bastard. He was, a, he was an illegitimate child, but he was convinced that he's the rightful king of England. So he came over, well, he just basically took land and, and put his nobles in charge of everything, okay? Yeah. So the medieval period, because we say medieval times, it actually stretches from when the Romans left to kind of the Tudor times, which is like um, 1400s, right? So it's about and a thousand. The Romans, when did thousand the Romans years, it's about a thousand, thousand years. Okay. So basically when we are talking about this medieval here, we're talking from 1066 onwards. Okay. Right, okay. And that is where all, most of the, the fun castles and monasteries and abbeys and stuff like that were built, which we are going to go to today. So this one was built in, uh, in the 12th century. So the monks were there for a long time, for a good few hundred years. Yeah. And then Henry VIII came to the throne in the Tudor time, so... Henry VIII was the one that had many wives. Yeah, he has six wives, divorced, beheaded, died. died divorced, beheaded, survived, yeah? So anyway, Henry decided to, it was called the disillusionment of the monasteries and he basically ransacked them all and took all the land for himself. And then some guy called Harrington, John Harrington, yeah. he bought it about 40 years after Henry did that. And well, Coombs Abbey. Yeah, Coombs Abbey. Anyway, so let's go back to the Tudors a second. There's a reason for it, okay? So after Henry, he obviously had, with his first wife, he had a girl. 
which is Mary. Second wife, Anne Boleyn, he had a girl, which was Elizabeth. Yeah. Third wife, Jane, he had a boy, Edward. Yay! That's what he wanted, right? Yeah. But Edward was a sickly thing. And when Henry died, Edward became king. But then Edward died. The cousin was put in as a queen, but, she, you know, for a week. She was crying, she didn't want to, and then she was executed for it, <laughs> which was so unfair. She was only a teenager, she didn't want it, and then she was killed. Anyway. So then Mary became queen, but they didn't want Mary to become queen, you see, because everybody was Protestant then. Well, not really. But okay, so this goes back to the martyr. Yes, thing. yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, Protestant, yes, it's all about Link this. above. Okay, hang on. So, yes. Edward dies. Yeah. Then Mary is in charge. She's Catholic. Ah, that's not good for the Protestants. But Mary dies. Then Elizabeth is in charge, okay? But then Elizabeth doesn't have children. She then names James the First. Well, he was James the Sixth at the time, King of Scotland, and then he changed to James I of England. Well, UK, Britain. Oh, he also married a Catholic, so people were hoping he would be more okay with the Catholics, you know, more tolerant. And he started off being a little bit more tolerant, and then he decided, nah, because all throughout Europe there was just fighting between Catholics and Protestants, and it was just everywhere, which was just so exhausting, right? He had some kids, one of them were included a daughter called Princess Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yeah. when she was nine, went to go stay at Coombe Abbey to live and be educated. Now, okay. th there's going when, to be another... When was this, like... This was in 1605. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to jump to another story and we'll come back to Elizabeth, right? right. Okay. Are you ready? No, it, it does relate. <laughs> okay. Yes, so now there's another story which starts two years before, so 1603. Okay. It starts with a man called Catesby. I think that's how you pronounce it. He was a Catholic who was like, come on, James, you're being a twat to us. I've got a plan that I'm going to give more, more power, more tolerance to Catholics, okay? He was going to kill King James, Parliament, James's wife, and James's son. Then they were going to kidnap the princess and make her a puppet queen to be able to give more tolerance to the Catholic or more power to the Catholic. Okay, that's the plan. Okay. Yeah. And it's also known as the gunpowder plot. Da, da, da. Do you know it? Guy Fawkes. Yes, Guy Fawkes. Okay. But Guy Fawkes isn't actually the main character. Yeah. Not really. Catesby so it's Catesby and Percy. Okay. From November 1603 to the May, they collected a whole load of people. Right. So we get to May 1604, and they've got about they've got about 12 or 13 people in this plot who have sworn an oath of secrecy because you know you're gonna this is treason you're gonna kill the king it's a big big thing and so the plan is they rented a, a house that was kind of near the House of Lords or near Parliament and their plan was to dig a tunnel and they started it and by Dece in May. And by the December, they were halfway through the wall. That same time, they discovered that there was a vault under the Houses of Parliament itself that was for rent. And so they were like, OK, let's do that instead. That's going to be easier. So they rented that and they uh, shoved it um, full of gunpowder, about 1.5 tonnes of gunpowder. They hid the barrels of gunpowder under big logs of firewood and coal so it looks like a big storage of firewood. So on the 4th of November they had got a pretend hunt going up by Coombe Abbey, you know, in that area oh, okay, to, yeah. as, as cover because the princess was there that they were going to kidnap. Yeah. We're going to be famous, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but there had been a letter, an anonymous letter had been delivered in London saying that mm, something's going to happen, don't go to Parliament if you, um, you know, want to live kind of thing. And so there was a search that was done and they went to go search these vaults or cellars, whatever they were, and they discovered Guy Fawkes and this, this like big storage of firewood. And he said, oh, he was just guarding it for his master, Percy. 
And they went, oh, okay, they let him go. Anyway, it was a bit silly that he had said Percy because Percy was a known Catholic agitator. Oh, yeah. And so they're like, right, that's, something's dodgy here. Let's go back. So they went back the next night, found Guy Fawkes again. Yeah. This time they found him with a hat and cloak and he had um, boots on with spurs and he had a lantern which actually is now housed in a museum in, in Oxford. How cool is that? Oh, really? And, um, and some matches and fire starters or whatever. Then they searched and they found the gunpowder and they were like, right, that's it, arrest him. Now, he gave his name as John Johnson, not as Guy Fawkes. So they interrogated him and they found a letter to Guy Fawkes on his person, but he said, no, 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 that was just an alias that he used. And he said he was from Yorkshire and they, he gave his mother's name, but that's all he said. And he, and he didn't say he wasn't going to do it. He actually admitted he wanted to blow up Parliament. Right. Um, but he said he was acting alone. There was no other person. And they interrogated him and interrogated him and he just refused to say anything more. And the king was actually really impressed by that. So instead they took him to the Tower of London and tortured him for a good few days. Uh, meanwhile, because he hadn't said anything, it meant that the other conspirators they heard about Guy being arrested, yeah. they then legged it out of London. Now this bit's a bit sketchy, I don't understand this bit. So there was a time where Catesby and Percy, they were in this room, I don't know why, drying some drying some uh, gunpowder and then it, it ignited and they, they got a bit scorched. Right. I, I think they were burned quite badly. Anyway, because of that, some of the others went off, still running away, and these others decided to stay and fight. And the sheriff came in with a lucky shot. He shot dead both Percy and Catesby with one shot. <laughs> yeah, so, so two are dead now, right? And the others escaped. Back to Guy Fawkes, who is now on the rack, being tortured terribly. And on the 7th of November, he confessed. Because you can imagine how horrific that was. I mean, yeah. you know, the rack where they stretch you until you pop and you... Oh, God. Anyway, it's awful. So he confessed on that day and he confessed again in the next two days where he was tortured again and again. They were all caught and they were all sentenced to be hung, drawn and quartered. Okay? So obviously two of them were dead. So they uh, dug up their bodies and uh, decapitated them and put them on spikes. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then for the others, they... Vindictive much? Pardon? Are they, are they vindictive by any chance? <laughs> it's the Middle <laughs> Ages, dude. The this is, this is crazy. Already, leave him alone. Yeah, but it's more, it was more about how dare you try and, and rise up against our king, yeah, you know, yeah, in our country, that. that kind of thing. So then they kind of hung, drew and quartered the others in batches. So they first, you know, where they, they drag them along behind the horse, they uh, hang them until they're almost unconscious, but not quite. And then they castrate them, disembowel them, and they can cook the innards in front of them. And then they quarter them and send the quarters to different areas to be displayed. Anyway, that's what happened. Now the last batch was where Guy Fawkes was in the last batch. And one of the guys who He's was- still alive. Yeah, after yeah. After okay. all the torture, but I very much doubt he could have any stand. He could be standing. I very much doubt that. So one of the guys who went to be hanged before him, he tried to jump off to the. You know where you get hanged. What's it called? Well, you, you know where you go and get hanged. Yeah, I don't know what they're called. I don't know. It's called the platform. <laughs> Whatever. So he jumped off, hoping his death would be quicker and he wouldn't have to deal with being castrated and stuff. But they managed to uh, catch him in time and uh, he then had, had all that fun stuff happen to him. And But Guy Fawkes did that, whether he fell, because he really wouldn't have been able to stand. I mean, if you're stretched on the rack to such an extent, I, you would not be able to stand yeah, anymore. Everything would, have everything would have popped and been stretched. It's like, I know the way I see it is like, it's not like that exactly, but it's like chewing gum, you know, where you kind of stretch it and then it just doesn't go back anymore. Or, no, it's not like that. It's like a hair bobble <laughs> that's been stretched too much and then it, it finally snaps. Really 
<laughs> it is, isn't it? Because it doesn't doesn't spring back. It also, anyway, so he fell and broke his neck. But I think that's fair enough because he was tortured enough as it was, really, wasn't he? So the people that went also, you know, to go and steal the princess. Yeah. That was foiled as well because they had enough time to tell her. And she was moved from Coombe Abbey into the walls of Coventry. And so she was safe. And then they decided that there should be a day that we celebrate to mark the day of, of this treasonous act. And so we have Guy Fawkes. And so we have Guy Fawkes, which okay. is celebrated, remember, remember, the 5th of November. So it's on the 5th of November. And so even to this day, we have fireworks there. Do you know what? So. Americans have fireworks on Independence Day. And yeah. do you know that, that Britain, <laughs> the Brit Britain kind of dominated so many countries that there are 63 countries in the world that have an independence state because of Britain. Oh, really? How <laughs> that bad is that? 63? 63. Bloody hell. I know. It's insane. Not all at the same time, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Can you name them? <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> Oh, I just noticed my gerbing writing. I feel like you have to do that with like a moustache. <laughs> gerbing. Do you, do you have a, um, a windscreen wiper on your thumb? I do. I scratched my face with it a few times. Yeah, I think it's quite cool. So I love it. Yeah. But you know what? I always forget that I have it. Do you think it would be any good with bug splatter? Hang on. I've tried. Is it no good? What if you spit on your hand first? <laughs> Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, golden. I'll follow only golden, 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 golden things. Spring, rainbow trout. 